Alright, hello and welcome back to Tom Q's Tech Tips. Today we are talking about SuperSource on the ATEM models, ATEM switching models that support that. In my case I'm using the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. I've made a few videos on SuperSource, it's one of my favorite topics. Uh, but all of all the previous ones have been using mix effect and today as you might guess um, we're going to be using the Elgato Stream Deck Plus with its rotary dials so let's go ahead and dive in I'm going to pull up a little picture let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to press these are these top four buttons are actually mix effect super source presets I'm going to go ahead and press one of those and we will open this is the um, this is a picture of my my very first switcher which was the Roland V1HD I'm not sure when it came out but I purchased mine and I think 2017 or 2018 as far as I know it was the first HDMI switcher that broke the thousand dollar point and it had it it had some features I liked which was one of which was the D-bar and the other was the the two knobs to the left of A and B, and they had a they did not have super source on this model, but they had um, they had a digital video effect that included picture in picture. So I would when I was doing training, I used this uh, for doing some training videos, and I would have my picture on the screen, and I could use those little knobs to be to tweak the appearance of my box, something like this. So if I wanted to go up, I could twist the B knob. If I wanted to go sideways, I could uh, twist the A knob. And I've been wanting to, to duplicate that with the Stream Deck Plus with its dials. And so I did some searching the other day and, and couldn't find any videos about it. Um, I did find some notes on GitHub or somewhere where someone had submitted a request to be able to do that. And some one of the developers actually responded that this was good idea and then done. So I started poking around. We're gonna gonna head on over to the Bitfocus Companion page. So I'm not gonna. This is not gonna be a tutorial on setting up Bitfocus Companion, um, but that's what I'm gonna be using. So you'll have to potentially watch some videos on setting that up if you don't know how to do that. But uh. Anyway, I, I am going to show you what, what software you're going to need. And I think you could potentially use MixEffect, the, uh, the MixEffect module that's under the name Adam Tau colon MixEffect. I think there would be commands in there to do this, but today I'm going to use the, the ATEM Blackmagic Design module. So if you, you'll have to either scroll down for that or just type in Blackmagic and it's the one it's the second one after you type that so black magic atem add that it will show up on your left column and then you're going to head over to the buttons section so i've already created some buttons and you can see um let's stretch this out just a tad i've got um four four buttons for atem super source presets that uh, mix effect is using so I can actually let's just let's just minimize this for a sec and I'm just going to press a few of these so I've got some set up for the right the left and then the top right and left and then this is the one I started out with so you can you can use mix, the mix effect super source presets in bitfocus companion um, but we're going to be doing these other things here, which so you can see I've got a couple of uh, uh, buttons that will just turn off. And this can be handy too, that can turn off the different boxes. So I'm box number one, the stream deck is box number two, and I've got, I've created buttons for doing that, which I will take a look at the command for that. And then I've got a knob, which is a dial stack. So we'll look at dial stacks in the stream deck software. And so when I press this particular dial, then I'm toggling between X and Y. Um, when I do this dial, right now I only have X, um, changing the box number two for the X axis. So we're gonna 
we're going to do a Y axis here. And then I've got this middle one button right here. I've got set to grow the box and from, from the lower left as a kind of a pinning point. And then if I tap it, let's just say we're on this preset. If I tap it, then it grows that box from the lower right. So, so anyway, let's go back over here and let's go ahead and let's let's look at our box number our box number two x axis and you'll see that if i scroll down the command that i'm using is the atem super source offset box command so we're going to be using the same command um the, the same exact command for the y-axis so i'm going to select an empty slot we're going to create a button and turn on the rotary actions. So that's a critical component there. I'm not sure exactly when Companion added that, but I think it's version three. So if you don't have version three, you'll need to you'll need to go to the the page on BitFocus where you can download a new version. So anyway, we're going to be looking for a left action and a right action. So I'm going to go ahead and click the the folder and choose the ATEM module and slide down a lot. We're going to go pretty far down to the super source section and there's the offset box properties command that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, click done. And it's offering me a lot of um, attributes that I don't need. So you can actually delete these, the ones you don't need. In fact, um, in my box to X axis, I didn't actually delete the size or the Y axis, but I could have because I'm not using those. So I could have just, I could have made it simpler if I would have gotten rid of those. So I get rid of Y and size there. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do uh, over here is I'm going to get rid of X and uh, I mean the box size and, and the X. And in this scenario, it's, currently operating on box number one, but I want it to operate on box number two. And I'm going to change this value to minus 0.5. And you can decide um, where you want to put this in smoothness or the fineness of the control or how fast you can move the box. So, so anyway, I'd be careful now uh, that I, in one of the takes of this video, I actually added, I was thinking I was adding my right connection where, where I was actually adding an extra, an additional left connect, a left action. So I need to come down and it, I've already, since I've already used this com command that I need recently, I can just click right here, choose that same command, super source, offset box properties, and then get rid of the things I don't need just to keep things simple. And change this to positive 0.5. Also, I need to change this box to number two. So let's go up to the very top and test our button. So when I press this one, it should bring the stream deck down one notch. When I click this one, it should bring it up one notch. So anyway, our, uh, our command is working. Now we need to assign it to the knob or the dial as stream deck calls it. So, um, so anyway, we're going to open, let's minimize this and we will head, head on over to the Stream Deck software. And so what I've done for all of these dials is add what Elgato calls a dial stack. So I basically just dragged a dial stack on top of the button. And, um, and in the case of my X axis here, I'm, uh, this first button, if we double click on that, I've added two bit focus companion commands, the X axis and the Y axis. So what happens is when I press the button, it toggles between the X and the Y. Um, and so when I'm on, let's just go over to X and I can move my face left to right a little bit. If I press the button, I can move it up and down a little bit. Uh, on the second dial stack, I have used the two commands to change the size of the box. So again, when I press it, it toggles between 
resizing up and then resizing down. So I've already got a dial stack going for box number two, but I only have done the X axis. So I need to go drag another companion button there. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name. Um, you know what? I don't think I named my button over there on, uh, so this is gonna be the Y, Y axis. Did I name my button? I don't know, I don't think I did. So let's go back to companion and I never did name my button. So we will call this box to Y axis, change that font size to 18. And then we'll come back to, um, to Stream Deck. And the page I was working on was page 97. And the button, I will tell you right now, it's button number 20. But let's go, let me just go back and, and show you one thing here. I'm gonna take this one off the screen a little bit so I can stretch this out. Um, I'm in the, in my last update on Companion, I, they changed the way the boxes are labeled, the buttons or the buttons are labeled. They were, they were named the same way that the Stream Deck software uh, is expecting them to be named. So when I would hover over this, it, it, well, let's just pick the second row. This would be, let's see, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. This would be 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. So um, you're still, as of February of 2024, the Stream Deck software is still looking for the old way of reckoning. So it's xx.20 on page 97. So that should be it. So now I should be able to toggle and we'll bring, we'll bring that back on the page. I should be able to toggle between the X and the Y. So now I can move, move this box in either direction. And it is box number two, so it slides behind me. I can turn my face off with that button right there. And uh, I haven't set one up to grow this particular box, but I don't, don't think I'll need to do that. So anyway, I think that's cool. Um, it's not quite as elegant as having a preset. Um, it doesn't animate as smoothly. But sometimes when I'm tra doing training, let me just turn, uh, let's just minimize that, turn off box number two. And let's just say I was teaching uh, Mac OS and I just wanted to get my face out of the way of the stage manager, for instance, and talk about stage manager. Um, I could, I, I can just tweak it, tweak the box a little bit to get it, to get it where I want, want it to be instead of, instead of having to create a preset for every little potential thing I might be talking about, or maybe I'm talking about the dock and I just want to get my face above the dock enough to where I can see the labels. So click, tap, and there we go. So, so anyway, that's just an example of some reason you might just want to move a box slightly. Um, let's bring, I, I do want to talk about, uh, just show you, um, how I created these buttons right here. Um, in, and then, so we'll pull up this again. I'm just gonna click one of these. It's just a different command. So instead of the command that I was using for moving the boxes, which was the offset box properties, let's go ahead and move this over like this. There we go. Uh, the command for these buttons I used was change box properties. So I changed the property. Let's go ahead and just add one here. Let's uh, create a button, click in that box, change box properties. And there's a whole bunch of properties you can use. I eliminated all of them except for, there it is right there. So there's the on air command. I just got rid of all the things except for on air. And, and then I set it to just toggle. So 
right here. I don't want it. I don't want it to 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 just do on air. I want it to go off air too. So I'm going to toggle, and then I wanted a feedback so that I could tell from looking at the button whether or not it was on or not. So in that scenario, I cl I used a command called add feedback box. There it is. Not sure where it is over here. Let's go back to this. Oh, there it is. Okay. I just missed it before. Box state. And that pretty much takes care of it. So when this is also a box one. So when I uh when I test that button, it's gonna take my picture on and off the screen. So anyway, I don't definitely don't want that one right there. I'm just gonna delete that button. And then the one where I resize my picture. That one is actually the same command that we were using, except instead of just doing the X or the Y, I'm actually resizing all three things at the same time. So um, just through experimentation, I found that if I wanted to pin it to the left, I needed to do something like 0 0.02 and 0 0.17. So if you don't if you're gonna, you could leave X and Y blank if all you wanted to do was grow the box from the center. So, so anyway, I think that's all I've got for you. So if you have any questions or if you have any other ideas of what we could be doing with these dials with the ATEM, I actually have, a, a, you know, there was a fairly large Fairlight section. So I've got one of my dials set to control my, the volume of mic one. But anyway, if you've got other ideas of what we can be doing with these dials on the Stream Deck Plus, please drop those ideas down in the comments below. And other than that, thank you for tuning in to Tom Q's Tech Tips, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day.